Hello, with Grid Shift here. If you guys have already purchased or are thinking about purchasing a Mod X subframe, this video is to show you how this subframe gets assembled. The package that you're going to receive it in, this is already empty to have all the parts laid out on the table, is going to be a two layer foam insert package. So, first layer is going to have all the main components. You pull this up and out, out of the way. Second layer is going to have a ton of other components and stuff like that. A lot of parts for this subframe. It is a modular design. So, in the future, we plan on releasing like skateboard racks or Ford racks and other like cargo style things for it. Right now it allows you to adapt a KTM free ride seat or the OEM seat. It also has a 12 bar with the adaptability of a titanium scrape plate. It has a step plate and two positions for foot pegs. So I'm going to assemble every single component right now that this will come with. When you configure this on your bike, you configure it with whatever components you want to use. So if you're using a free ride seat, you won't you, you will use the free ride mount for the rear latch mechanism. If you're not using a free ride seat and you're using a regular Sauron seat, then you don't need to install that mount. So let's get into it and let's uh, start the install. All right, guys, so you can see I already have all my hardware and everything laid out. Also tools, you're only going to need a 4 mil, 5 mil, and 6 mil Allen and a 10 mil open end wrench. I have all the components and everything laid out here in the order that it gets installed in. Also, if you're using a KTM Freeride seat, you will need to purchase this separately. This is a latching mechanism for the rear of the seat to be able to actuate your seat lock. All right, guys, let's dig right into this. I know this looks like a lot of parts, but everything kind of just fits where it needs to go. So if something doesn't seem like it fits, do not force it because it's not meant to go there most likely. So we're going to start with our main subframe rails. You could see this all has uh, cuttings and stuff like that. The design on one side, no design on the other side. Another way you could tell from outside to inside of subframe is the bend here. This mounts on your main frame here and it curves in. And you could also tell right here where these opens where the cross supports go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount my cross support right here and this is like an offset cross support this is for your battery lid lock so you will need to make sure that this is shifted over to the left side of the bike again the front of the bike is this way the left side of the bike will be that way so make sure that this is shifted over that way and not like this so we're going to go ahead and get some of our six mil countersunk hardware and start bolting this in as you're bolting things together, I typically leave things kind of loose. That way everything can fit together nice and easy because everything is very, very tight tolerance fit like you can see there. And another thing to note is to use Loctite. There is a tube of Loctite included with this kit. Use Loctite on all your main structural bolts and fasteners. So once we have this bolted up here, now we can move over to the left side main support. This is just going to fit right in place right here. Once that's there, I'm going to put the M6 countersunk hardware in place, screw it in. I apologize if you guys hear a bunch of noise. Uh, there's guys in the back of the warehouse right now. They're cutting metal and doing all kinds of crazy stuff over there. So now we have our main subframe kind of mounted already. Still kind of loose, you could see. That's some movement there. Now we're going to adapt our rear supports. So you could see that this is recessed in right here on the main support. This just fits right in place like so. And then we're going to go get some of our M8 hardware. This hardware right here. I'm going to screw that in place using a 6 mil Allen. Now I'm going to move over to the other side, get this again, this shaped edge right here fits into the subframe so that sticks out and you can always tell by the design where it's chamfered in. Now 
Now I'm going to flip this over upside down. We have two holes right here. That is going to be this guy right here. You can see there's some concaved holes here. That's where our countersunk hardware goes, mounts right there. Going to get two more M6 countersunk bolts using a 4 mil Allen to bolt this in. This is going to allow you to mount your OEM brake light or if you have like a lighting kit that holds a license plate, that's what this is for. This is also going to be used as a support if you are running the KTM 85 or KTM free ride seat, I should say. Sorry about that. That you're going to use two M6 bolts and two nuts as well. So I usually put bolt facing down with a nut on the bottom, secure it, and this is primarily what you would be using that open end 10 mil wrench for and the 5 mil Allen. I'm not going to make this really tight right now just so it's easy to disassemble because I have to repackage this after we're done. And your OEM light bracket would mount right there. And we're, there is hardware included for that as well. So you won't have to use those coarse threaded screws. Right here, if you are using a KTM Freeride seat, that's another support that's going to bolt right there using the same hardware that we just used for the rear support. And then we have this rear support here. This is where your seat slash fender would mount. Key note here, guys, if you're using a short OEM fender, these rails will protrude out. I would recommend using the V2 extended rear fender because that rear fender will basically cover this entire rail, rail here. That way it's not exposed. For this, we're going to use, again, 6 mil countersunk hardware and this bracket could be mounted either which way it doesn't matter because it's all even for this back portion here that you see that's kind of weirdly cut in there's going to be two sides this is for the OEM KTM seat latch there's going to be two sides to this piece of hardware. You could see that one, the spacing is different than the other side. Also, one side is smaller and one side is larger in diameter here. That is for the OEM seat latch mechanism. This is something that you would have to purchase separately. So you could see this fits in right there. And if you look at the back of this plate, this plate has a notch that comes out. That basically holds this mechanism for the latch right here in place. That way when you go to release your seat, you push this back and it acts as a spring. So this will be a little tight to get in just because it is spring loaded essentially. So here we're going to use our longer M6 hardware that we have here. What I like to do is kind of just place this right here on the spring. Push it with my hand like so, that way everything's positioned. Feed that through, feed that through there. And now it's kind of all in. It just popped out right there. So I'm just going to stick that right back in. You have to kind of hold this in place. And then the latch faces forward. This back plate faces backwards. And this will allow you to unlatch your seats. I'm going to show you how this all actuates once it's all kind of tight in here. And since this is kind of already spring loaded, don't force it in. Like if it's not screwing in nice and smooth, you don't want to cross thread it, back it back out, and just make sure your bolts and stuff are all in alignment. So basically right here, this is how you release your seat. Simple little push like that, seat comes up, no problems. All right, so next thing that we're going to do here, we're moving along really, really quick, quickly. If you do plan on using the 12 bar, which is this piece right here, 
you will need to use these support braces. This is basically just to support this general area where the rear portion of the subframe mounts the front portion. It's just an extra added layer of support. These could be confusing because, again, two different sides. How you could tell which sides outside and inside is you have these cut in holes here. How you could tell which way is right is these cut in holes go towards the back. You do not want them like this. This will not line up correctly here. So you want this, these two holes towards the back and the cut cutouts facing outside. So this is for your foot peg brace. Go ahead and just hand screw these in. And we have, again, two different locations and also two different types of foot peg mounts. This triangular mount, they're both triangular mounts, but this open design triangular mount is the front mount. The closed design triangular mount is the rear mount, which we'll get to that one next. So basically, these are two, there's two, difference, two differences with this. You can see right here, one has a lip, other side does not have a lip. So these are directional. These have to be on the correct side. Since this whole support brace is kind of going at an angle, you're going to get the part, the portion with the lip here mounted towards the back of it. And that's just so this mounts level with this support brace. Going to go ahead and get some of our M8 hardware. Screw this in place. Now we're going to slide in, and notice I'm doing one whole side at a time just because it's easier for me. There's tons of different ways that you can configure this. Now we're going to slide our 12 bar in. So you can see again, everything's notched, grooved, and everything like that. This is going to have to slide in from the back portion. Now this is adjustable, so you should be able to adjust. I forgot what Rusty said it at. I think it's like two inches or something like that. This is the closest in. So this is if you're going to scrape the 12 bar, if you have a titanium plate on the back, again, that is purchased separately. You could adjust it all the way in. That's gonna give you way past 12. You're gonna have to go in deep and then you could adjust it all the way out right there. This is gonna be your furthest adjustment out. One bolt hole exposed. You go further, which you could theoretically, you don't have that added support here with this notch and slot holding it in place essentially. So you could break this. So I would recommend only going as far as one hole out exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this all the way in right, right here like so. We're going to mount our rear most foot peg sport brace. Again, this is notched. This fits right into this countersunk area right here. For this, if we are using these rear peg mounts, we will use this M8 hardware that has a shoulder on it. This makes it a little bit longer so it could get full thread engagement. If you do not plan on using these, you could use the regular M8 hardware. Screw it right in here like so. I'll put one on one side and, and the other one not on the other side as an example. And then the foot pegs, we will just use the regular M8 hardware, drop that in, kind of shake it around until the bolt comes through the bottom of the hole. Use our six mil Allen, screw this in right here. Both of these triangular brackets are threaded, so this will thread right in. Again, make sure you're using Loctite on all these structural components. So you can mount the foot peg here or here. You do not have to mount the foot peg at all if you don't want to. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this over and we are not going to mount the foot peg bracket here just so you guys can see how it looks in normal mounting without the foot peg brackets. 
Again, if you don't plan on using the 12 bar, you do not need the support braces that go here, like so, and you do not need to use this 12 bar. So no 12 bar, no foot pegs. You could remove this and you could also remove this. You do not need that part. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just fully assemble this. And I will leave these triangular brackets off of this side and not install the foot peg on this side. So last but not least, the step plate for the rear. You're going to use these two components. You will need to bolt this component into the rear 12 bar first. And for that, you're going to use the M6 hardware, this hardware right here using a five mil Allen or going all the way around. Now we're going to get four countersunk bolts, M6 bolts, and we're going to bolt our step plate in using the 4 mil Allen. Step plate goes in like so, just line up the holes, stick that in and start screwing away. All right, that's in. So that's pretty much everything for this kit, guys. Again, a lot of parts, but it's really simple to install. Last things that I want to go over is if you are using a KTM Freeride seat, you will have these weird looking brackets here with thumb screws. This is to mount the KTM Freeride seat up front using the OEM KTM Freeride seat mount. These just slide into the seats. Then you put this thumb screw in place, screw it down nice and tight. Once that's done, you bolt this onto the battery where what used to be the battery lid connector on your Suron frame. You can see that this is notched. You can see that this is notched right here. So the front of the bike is facing this way. This notch, you're going to want to have it leaning forward essentially. So this is going to be mounted like this, like so. And then this side will be mounted like this. Not on the subframe, of course, on your Suron frame where the battery lid used to mount. So it's going to mount kind of like this. Seat bracket's going to sit in between the thumb screw and this bracket here. This will allow your seat to still swivel upwards when you unlock it to pull your battery out, service the bike, whatever it is. So there's also countersunk hardware for this, bagged and labeled. Super easy to install that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. I just don't have any bikes here right now to show you guys how that all comes together. So final thing here is now everything's still kind of loose. I would recommend mounting this to the frame of your bike. This will just slide right onto the frame of your Suron. And once it's mounted using the button head hardware that comes with it, M8 button head hardware, that way it doesn't protrude out and you know catch your legs or anything like that. Um, then I would go through every single bolt and just make sure everything's nice and tight and snug. Um, if you do not plan on using a KTM free ride seat, this square bracket here, you do not need, you will still need this lower cross support brace. This square bracket that protrudes upwards, you do not need that. And you do not need this locking mechanism either. If you plan on using the free ride seat, or if you plan on not using the free ride seat, sorry, 
So that concludes this. If you guys have any questions, any way that we can make these videos a little bit better, easier for you guys to understand, please comment below and let us know.